Hello everybody and welcome back to Pi Simple GUI 2020. This lesson is on button targets and it, when I say targets here I'm, I'm meaning targets from a chooser type button. So you have normal buttons that generate events. Chooser buttons are different. They don't generate events uh, on their own that it's possible to get an event due to a chooser button, but by itself, its task is to fill in another element. Um, I'll, sh uh, I'll show you what that's all about as we go through these. These are the types of, of choosers. There's two categories. There's file oriented, and then there's other. So for file, there's files, folders, and then the other two are a color chooser and a calendar. The calendar button is being reworked and hopefully you will we'll see that very, very soon uh, in the next few days. It's a much nicer looking calendar. You will see it in this demo. So let's uh, get on with this by running this code. And what I've done is set up some choosers ahead of time. There are a lot of options to these file and folder, although many times you'll just see um, the, the most basic form, which is usually an input followed by a file browse with no parameters. And it creates something that looks like this, where it's an input field and a button next to it that says browse. By default, these browser chooser uh, type buttons say browse on them uh, and by default they fill the element immediately to their left so in this case it's an input element this uh, happens to be a file browse and uh, I also have set file types for this so you can get fancy with your code and, and have it look very professional by saying uh, only show these file types and what that does is puts over here in the file types the, the types that you've chosen. Uh, it defaults to star dot star um, that will be changed soon to just star so I, in this case, there's config files that I used as the file type. I chose one, and it filled in the input element to its left. There's often a delay, and that's due to the, the GUI. It's the GUI framework, Dekinter in this case. Um, so what do I mean by, by targets? Um, like I said, it, it fills in elements. Uh, and it defaults to the one to the left. You can specify a target, and it is a key, generally speaking. And in this case, you'll see that this is a folder. I, I put the name folder on here so that we would recognize it. Let's delete this. Let's choose folder, and it will pull up a folder chooser. And when we select it, it will fill in this input element because it has the matching key. Now, because it fills in elements doesn't necessarily mean it has to be an input element. So here, this is a text element, clearly. And uh, next to it is a File Browse button. And once again, it will browse. <clears throat> and in this case, it's going to default to start at star. I didn't specify uh, a file types. And as you can see, it filled in the text element instead of uh, the input element. Now, the dictionary can be a little confusing for these chooser buttons, and it's due to the way PySimple GUI has evolved. I don't really want to take a deep dive here. Stick to your defined elements with keys. When you look at or pull values out of the values dictionary that comes back from the read, you're going to find that these chooser buttons have keys that show up in your uh, values variable as well. Just ignore them. Stick with the Im using the input fields. Um, I, I, when PySimple GUI releases are made, 
a, a lot of care is taken to make sure existing programs don't break you know that, that everything stays backwards compatible that that means things can be kind of weird sometimes uh, I also want to show that uh, so whenever you do an and open with a file browse or when you use a file browse with no parameters it has open as the top of the dialog box and so you see here at the top of the chooser it says open uh, if you wanted to be able to save files you, you clearly can't do open so there's a, a file save as that you can do. So instead of file browse, it's file save as. And let's try this one. And you'll see at the top that it's, uh, for one, it filled in save as as the text instead of browse. You can change that. You'll see that the dialog box has save as. And if I choose something that exists, and I click save it's going to give me this confirmation dialog that you don't have to do anything for this to show up um, Tekinter does this on your behalf um, if you say yes then it will return the value uh, to to your code and it will fill in here it doesn't overwrite your file or anything like that it is simply verifying that you want to really choose that file. Um, it's up to your code as to what you do with the file afterwards. It's, it's simply filled into an, an, an input element. So we've talked about files, or, or file. We've talked about folders. What about files? So if you want to open multiple files, um, then there's a files browse button and you can select multiple files and it will return them um, as a single string with a semicolon delimiter and that delimiter can be changed um, there's a, a you can change the delimiter and you would do a split on this uh, to parse and get this back into a list form uh, instead of a string in your code um, if you had one of these kinds of buttons. Let's move on to a situation that uh, is asked about often which is I want an event when someone chooses a file and the way to make that happen uh, is to enable the events for whatever your target is. So here it's a file browse. Uh, I'm going to enable the events. I've also indicated here that this input field is not visible. So what you see is it is a browse and when you choose a file it's going to fill in that invisible input element and it's going to generate uh, an event um, and so you see here's a print and there's uh, it printed that an in to event happened which is what this key is and it also tells you the value there of what was chosen so that's sort of the trick here for how do I get an event when someone has chosen a file or a folder okay let's move on to the other two choosers which are the calendar and the color chooser and uh, the um, what I'm doing here by the way of commenting out uh, rows in my layout is a very handy debugging technique um, it, it's kind of surprising in a way that you're able to do this that you can just knock out pieces of the list and it it you know does it fine with the layouts um, really handy so here's our calendar this is the new format of calendar um, it uh, allows you to jump ahead by years um, you can change what day of the week it starts you can change headers there's there's lots of options that are available with the new 
calendar. There's there's a pop-up for it as well. Um, you can change the output string. A lot of those already existed. Let me show you what the old one looked like. Okay, so I've uh, temporarily renamed my PySimple GUI file so that I am running 4.18.12, which is what is on PyPI at the moment. And so this is the calendar that everyone is used to. It is located wherever Tkinter decides to place it. You can see it is rather plain. Um, uh, hang on, I'll, I'll pull up the other one next to it. And like magic here is the new calendar. So it's it's a it's an improvement to say the least. You can um, also locate it anywhere you want on the, the screen. There's a location parameter that comes with it. Um, one of the more exciting things I think is that you it will match your theme. So if I have a dark red theme and uh, so my window is going to look different and I pull up a calendar it uses the themes colors to create the calendar that that's that's pretty slick huh I mean, really I mean I I like this obviously <laughs> so uh, that's the new calendar it's coming very soon I promise uh, it uh, is also going to be added to the Qt port. I don't believe the Qt port has any calendar at this point. Uh, so it, it needs something. Uh, finally here we have the color chooser and this is the, the chooser that's built into Tkinter. You choose a color and the format is a hex RGB uh, that's output. You can also make your own color choosers. Um, there's a demo program that shows um, one just if it's a, like a pop-up. So if you don't like the the calendar or the color chooser you can make your own. In fact this calendar, the new one, is um, n nothing but a plain PySimple GUI window. It is not written in to enter the way the old one is. It's uh, an actual uh, PySimple GUI created window. Okay, so that, that's it for button targets. I think we covered them all. Thank you very much for watching and thank you to all the PySimple GUI users. Um, you guys are the best user community on the internet. It's been the most supportive experience. Uh, that I, I think I could ever hope to have. So thank you all.